So you're wanting to learn how to be a better, faster rider. You want to be able to hop on your dirt bike, go rip this thing out on the trails and be like a pro. Well, and today we're going to go over and cover some of the common mistakes people make when you're out on the trails riding one of these dirt bikes. So let's hop right into it. Now, not everyone is a pro on the dirt bike. Everyone loves to get out and have some fun on the dirt bike and that's sweet and all, but we always make mistakes and we always want to improve our riding to be that much better of a rider. And that's when we're going to start with our very first common issue that we see on dirt bikes is people not knowing what gear they're in, not being able to just listen to the sound of the bike and hear what gear they're in. It's important to know what gear you're in when so you know if you're in power, if you're going to be in the power band, or if you're going to be bogging the bike. So if you're coming into a corner in too high of a gear, you might run off to the outside of the corner. Or if you're coming to the corner in too low of a gear, you're going to be too high up in the RPM band, uh, having too much torque into the out of the corner. Now when you're starting out, you may not know what gear you're in and you really just want to go by feel. You know, if you want to go faster, go up a gear. If you want to go slower, go down a gear. But just really learning to hear the bike and listen for those RPMs on what the bike wants on whether it wants you to upshift or downshift and the bike is really can tell you what it wants and um, where it wants to be in what gear and while we're here talking about the gear shifter be gentle on your shifter you don't have to be slamming your foot down on that shifter you know if you just gently move it with your toe um, you're going to save the longevity of that engine and the transmission inside of it you know there's just no reason for you to be jamming and slamming down on the gears trying to find neutral or whatever it is, you know, that's just, there's no point in doing that. So just be gentle on your shifters and the bike's transmission will last you a lot longer. Over time, you wanna to listen to the bike and use that as your cues on when you need to shift. If the bike is screaming high, you're ready to shift up into the next RPM. Do you know you went through the power band of that lower gear, which you're using the most of the bike, which is how you are gonna be the fastest around the track or on the trails. Now, the second common mistake we see all the time happen is people's body language. They're not moving their bodies around on top of the bike. They're staying pretty stationary. They're staying very rigid, very stiff and they're not really moving around on the bike and that's just going to cause a lack of control really just scare you on the bike really if you have one of those holy crap moments when you're on top of the bike and if you're not ready for it, you're not loose and you know you got lots of movement ready on your bike um, you might throw you off your bike so having some good body language being loose on the bike is super important a couple examples are if you're on a hill climb you're gonna know you're trying to balance that fine line of how far backwards you want to lean or how far forwards you're leaning on the bike to try and give as much traction as you can to that rear wheel without lifting that front tire as you're doing a a hill climb and the same goes for if you're going on like a, a descent or going down the hill same thing you want to try and find that balance where you don't want to be leaning too far forward because when you are leaning too far forward putting too much weight on that front wheel you might have that front tire wash out on a log or on a rock and then end up wiping out onto your lips so you're trying to find that fine balance of leaning far enough backwards to keep it pressure off that front tire so it doesn't want to plow out but enough pressure on it that you do have weight on the tire to keep traction so it does want to stay tracking straight so it's trying to find that fine balance of leaning too far forward leaning back and then your balance also really comes into play when you're going into corners if you see someone who's just saying sitting upright and they're just trying to turn into corners you know you can't carry nowhere near as much speed as you can to someone who's fully leaned over tucked into the corner ready to turn having your body language is really going to help you turn in the corners faster it's going to help you carry more speed through the corners and it's just going to keep you a safer rider you know if you're if you're not leaning into the corners there's a lot more likelihood for you to wash out to the outside of the corner and then you wipe out and you crash off the side of the trail so you don't want to do that so learning good body english is super important really just got to get on the bike practice it move around on it be mobile don't sit on it stand up move around put your weight around left to right front to back on the bike it'll help you keep the most amount of traction down on the ground a good tip for anyone who's just starting to ride the dirt bike for the first time is to keep your weight leaned over forward so if you're not used to that power of a dirt bike and you go to get on the throttle it doesn't scare you by picking up the front wheel because you have your weight over that front tire so it's keeping the front end planted so you're not popping wheelies or anything scary like that so just a good tip for anyone who's beginning is to just keep some of your weight a little bit leaned forward to keep that front tire down when you're uh, just learning how to use the throttle now our next common issue we're going to go over and talk about is poor clutch control now why is clutch control important because you need to be able to have full control over your dirt bike now if you don't know how to control the clutch on your dirt bike your control can be limited with it uh, you can do a lot of maneuvers with being able to control the clutch in a, a, a controlled way, such as if you need to pop up the front tire and turn the bike around to pivot and change directions, you can do so if you have good clutch, clutch control by popping the clutch, quickly grabbing it back in to have that tire drop back down, as well as it comes in a really good play when you're doing hill climbs. If you're starting to pick that front tire up, you can pull the clutch in for a lever to drop that tire back down. So learning how to control the clutch is gonna be super important. It's gonna help you dial in, have faster shifting, better re reaction time to what you need to be for each gear and uh, being able to just control that clutch and uh, really be able to know what you're doing when you need to be able to do certain activities when you're out on the trail doing a hill climb or even racing being able to control that clutch on the start line when you're trying to get 
Uh, that whole shot can be super important on that clutch control and dropping the clutch, not stalling the bike out, as well as trying to let it out without having just too much wheel spin on the back tire and actually having a smooth let of the clutch uh, to give you the best acceleration you can out of the corners or even off the straights. Another thing about your clutch control that's super important is keeping in habit of keeping your fingers over the clutch levers. Uh, even when you're not using the clutch, it's just a good habit to keep at least one finger, if not two, just resting over top of your clutch. So any given instant, if you need to pull that clutch in, you can emergency pull that clutch, whether you're doing a wheelie, doing a hill climb and the front tires coming up, whatever the instance may be, you want to have a finger just resting on that clutch. So at any given time, you can quickly go ahead and pull that clutch lever in and avoid avoid that front tire from coming up oh, or avoid say if you had uh, you know your whiskey throttle you can have that clutch right there to disengage it so you don't catwalk it out or if the throttle gets stuck or whatever the reason may be it's just a great tip is to keep that finger on there and that is a common mistake I see all the time is that nobody keeps their finger over their clutch lever or their brake lever it's super important for both your brake and your clutch to keep a finger on each one of those you can quickly and accessibly grab either one of the brake or the clutch at any given time when you need to because it happens sometimes you know you get too too focused and you're just holding handlebars you forget about holding your fingers on the clutch levers and or the brake lever and it's super important that you keep a finger on that to avoid uh, you know any un, un wanted crashes so that's a common mistake I see all the time now another thing about clutches when we're on the topic of them is when you're starting to learn how to use the clutch you can never let the clutch out too slow and I see all the time where I common beginners get on the bike and they're just they're dumping the clutch and you get a whole bunch of wheel speed and it's like an uncontrolled start that's just really sketchy you know if you're on a cliff side or something where you need to be precise and accurate with what you're doing just dumping the clutch is uh, not the way to do it or if you're on a hill climb it can be really tough to get started if you're just dumping the clutch and having a whole bunch a wheel slip uh, and then you don't move anywhere and you just dig a hole with the back tire so learning how to properly slip that clutch on hill climbs uh, and not dumping it is uh, super important and the best way to get the most amount of traction when you are doing a hill climb now our next common mistake I see quite often and it happens to the best of us and that's why they're called common mistakes because it does happen to all of us is not looking where you want to go now if you look at the big rock in the middle of the trail you're gonna ride right into the big rock in the middle of the trail so you need to be looking ahead far enough you know you don't want to be looking two three feet ahead of you you want to be looking 10 20 feet out ahead of you so you can help predict and help your brain just process of what's coming up on the trail ahead when you look at the big rock it's hard for you to figure out where you're gonna how you're gonna get around the big rock because you're focused on looking at the big rock so it's super important that you look around the object and through the path that you want to go and not where you're trying to avoid your brain will kind of just psychologically just block out the rock and it will kind of help you avoid it if you just look past it and be on the rock you can kind of keep that mentally in your head that there was a rock there or a log or whatever you're trying to avoid but trying to pick out a path by looking far ahead and keeping focused on continuously looking farther and farther ahead and not focusing right ahead of you but looking out ahead is going to keep you focused on the finding the clearest way up that trail and the fastest way through the trail same thing goes for the racetrack you want to look far ahead and look for those apexes look for the corners and look ahead as far as you can because when you're focusing right here you miss the guy that's crashed 20 feet up ahead of you so you want to keep your eyes up and focus on what's coming up next on the trail that's really crucial to keep you from running into any sort of surprises uh, that you might have up ahead uh, so that's super important if you don't want to wipe out now this next common mistake happens to me all the time and I'm constantly trying to improve myself on it and that is just gripping on way too way too tight onto the handlebars when you're riding into a really technical section and you're taking your fingers off the clutch and the brake and you're just holding on for dear life and you get forearm pump now what is forearm pump it's when you're squeezing your muscles extremely tight and you have all the blood rush down into your muscles and then you have a bunch of lactic acid build up in your muscle and it burns that is the burning sensation you get in your forearms when you're just holding onto those handlebars so tight and you get that death grip where your hands hurt because you're holding so tight and uh, it's just never good because it wears you out prematurely on the trail now another issue that happens when you're holding on too tight is that your whole upper body becomes extremely rigid and you've lost now that body movement that we were talking about earlier and you're just rigid you're like a pole on the bike you're stiff as all hell and you're not moving around and that gives you a loss of traction on the dirt bike because now you're not moving around on it and getting around on the bike you're just you're just holding on as tight as you can and just hitting the bumps and oh man I'm just holding on to all this stuff right holding on too tight it just leads to a whole bunch of issues from you know not having your fingers on the levers to now your body's really rigid and upright and tight you're losing you know mo mobility and you get more fatigue right that's the worst part you fatigue yourself out your arms get sore you get tired and you're more exhausted throughout the whole rest of your ride the best tip I can give you is just trying to be limber relax you can stretch your hands out stretch your arms out before you go riding just to try and mitigate as much as you can of that forearm pump now a common myth is you want to get jack you know you want 
huge big forearms and you don't get forearm pump, right? Wrong, that's that's completely uh, the opposite. The more jacked and like big you are with huge muscles, the more blood that can build up inside your forearms to give you even worse forearm pump. So that's why you'll see like some of the best enduro riders aren't the guys that are 200 pounds or the guys that are pretty small because they don't get nowhere near as bad as arm pump, leg pump because they don't have as much blood build up with that lactic acid in their legs or in their arms when they're riding really tough stuff and holding on. Uh, they're just better at di dissipating that in their arms and legs. So that is another thing to just try and keep in mind of is to try and keep a relaxed grip if you can and just try and keep your shoulders and your forearms nice and loose throughout the ride and that'll try and mitigate as much as you can of that forearm pump. Now an additional tip I can give you to try and mitigate as much of that forearm pump is is using your knees to actually squeeze the tank of the bike when you're riding. Now when you do that it's giving you two extra points of contact. You've now got six different points on the bike. You know you got your two hands, your two feet and now you got your knees gripping the tank. Now you don't have to hold on as tight with your hands as you were because you now have your knees giving you an extra point of contact with the bike which is helping you have more stability uh, and it gives you another thing to grab and toss the bike around with your knees underneath you so you don't have to do it so much by holding on so tight with your hands. Now all of these common issues that we have just covered here they're all going to be exponentially uh, blown up in proportion of how much they affect you by our next common issue that happens all the time is people buying the wrong bike to start with. Now if you hop on some crazy jacked up 500cc two-stroke you're gonna have a hell of a time learning how to do learning your clutch play on that dirt bike and you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to not have really intense forearm pump and tight squeezing grips because the bike's so damn fast and crazy, you know, and you're gonna have to be aware of the pop and wheelies and all sorts of stuff. So all those common issues that we were just talking about, they all get uh, blown up into bigger issues if you start on the wrong bike. If you guys wanna learn on how to get the correct bike and for you, I have, uh So if you're looking to buy a used, but so if you're looking at a dirt bike, I got a guide right up here for you guys to check out. You guys can click that and you guys can find out everything you need to know about trying to buy a dirt bike for yourself, whether it's your first time, you wanna buy new, you wanna buy used, you wanna buy Japanese, you wanna buy Chinese, whatever the dirt bike may be, I got a guide up here and uh, those videos can help you out, figure out what will be best suited for you in your riding style. Now a couple bonus common mistakes I see happen with people and their dirt bikes now that say you've bought one. There's gonna be two things that I see happen often with people and their dirt bikes that cause them issues down the road with their dirt bikes. Number one is gonna be when you're washing your dirt bike to remember underneath your intake boot on the dirt bike is to remember to clean and dry in between the boot and the spark plug because what happens is all the times people wash their dirt bikes with a hose or any sort of pressured wash and the water gets in between the boot and the plug and then you get corrosion happening and then you have a loss of spark and it just kills your electronic system in your bike. So that's one common mistake I see happen all the time. And another common issue I see that causes issues and a, a, a issue in your wallet down the road is when people are riding their bikes and they just don't change out their brake pads enough. They're actually just, your people are leaving an old brake pad in and uh, you can hear it, you know, screaming reaching against the brake rotor and then it just destroys your brake rotor and now you have to replace the pads and the rotor so you've just doubled the cost of the one simple replacement of a set of brake pads is now double the price and you have to buy a set of rotors to it so those are just a couple extra common mistakes I see happen way too often on dirt bikes uh, and something I want to help you guys avoid those are all the common mistakes I see happen all the times on your dirt bikes if you guys want any advice on how to make your dirt bike faster I'll have a video up here if you guys need any help with getting your dirt bike started I have a dirt bike up here that can also help you get started out uh, if you guys need help with with learning how to tune your carburetors. I got videos covering that. Uh, I got all the help you can need possibly on any of your dirt bikes. So you guys can always feel free to leave any comments down below and I can help you guys out with that. Other than that, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.